Hey, Reality Based Leadership fans, I got some big news. August 28th, the Ditch the Drama Tour goes virtual. Last year, we kicked off the Ditch the Drama Tour and we put it to be a nationwide experience and we were coming to you, but only one thing has changed. Now you get to come to us. What hasn't changed is incredible content. Join us. This is a big opportunity for you and for your teams. We will revisit a few basics of reality-based leadership philosophy, then we're gonna go deeper, and then we're gonna make sure that we apply these principles to your life today. And to help me do that, I'm gonna bring in my team, I'm gonna bring in some of my favorite colleagues, I'm gonna bring some of my favorite folks to you to have a fantastic day online, virtual. You're going to experience not just our like senior level stuff, but you're going to hear about topics relevant to today. How do you apply reality-based leadership to what is happening in the world today? So I'm gonna give you the basics, we're gonna go deeper, and then we're gonna apply it to today. You're gonna to meet my dream team, you're gonna hear from them, you're gonna have the opportunity to get merchandise that uh, you may not even know exists so that you can rep with our baseball hats and our t-shirts, but most importantly, we're gonna spend the day together in an interactive online virtual session doing what we love to do best, and that is ditching the drama. So join me August 28th, bring all your team. It's in the link below. I need you signing up. Some of you remember that we had started our incredible Ditch the Drama tour. We had four cities planned and we were well on our way. We had a fantastic first session in Houston. Love my Houstonian fans. It was really splendid. And then unfortunately, world health crisis got us all to stay home. And now we are finding ways to do things virtually. I didn't want to come to you with a virtual offering that wasn't gonna be fantastic. So we have great studios we have set up. We have really great equipment and we're gonna make it fun. We're gonna make it interactive. So for those of you that already had tickets, those of you that already had tickets to one of our other cities, this is your day. You are already paid, you are in, we will be sending you registration information. For the rest of you, wanna buy tickets? Do it now and do it by hitting the link below. We want to get you registered. We've got some cool stuff coming your way. Do not miss out on this. Welcome to another episode of the No Ego Podcast. As you can see from this video, we are getting some new technology figured out. And I'm so excited because Dr. Sasha is rejoining me to talk about life in the midst of a world health crisis and a ton of other great dialogue going on. Hey, Sasha, how are you? I'm great, Sai. Thanks for having me on. I'm so Good. excited to chat. We, yeah, I'm kind of giggly because I've got that quarantine loneliness and just seeing your face, like we haven't connected, we've connected online, but for like three months. So it's just fun to I see know. faces. It's fun to I see miss faces. you so much. I miss you and I, um, your day job, of course, you're at uh, Nebraska Med and UNMC being a brilliant anesthesiologist and faculty member. Um, so I think about you every day and all my peeps at Nebraska Med, who I just consider world geniuses. So not that I'm biased, but uh, <laughs> so thanks for all you're doing. I know you're not right on the front lines, but you're certainly holding up your end of the world. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's been, it's been an interesting uh, season to be in medicine. And to be doing, you know, acute care, acute care medicine. It's been really yeah. interesting. So I bet, I bet. I, however, love your second day job even more, only because I get that's our playground. I get to be part of it. Um, I know. So you have an organization that's uh, brave enough, and you, I don't even know what to say. You profoundly help women, many in medicine, live through what used, we used to think was a crisis situation. Now we have redefined crisis, right? But, <laughs> but tell, tell everybody about Brave Enough because I got to brag up front. You got a conference coming up. Well, it's, it's 
a great organization. You know, I, you, they say that you build what you need yourself. And this is an organization that I myself really needed about five years ago after burning out. And so I have about 12,000 women that I lead in this organization to invest in themselves. So I really encourage women to invest in themselves, to push pause and to figure out in the middle of life when they're hearing all the messages that they should not be investing in their self, but they should be doing career and family and all these other things. You know, the whole point of the organization is just to pause and help tired, overwhelmed women learn how to invest in themselves and to actually have joy in the middle of your life. I love so, that. So you don't have to yeah, postpone awesome. joy. It's like you don't have to defer happiness. And I think that's what bonded us so quickly is even in the messy mock, it's like you don't have to be grateful for what's happening, but you can be grateful in the moment it is happening. Like you can have both these th- these sides of joy, I find myself, in order to get my needs met when I'm over-functioning, over-exaggerate and hide any possibility of joy because I want people to know how much I need support instead of just asking for support. And so it's it's weird. It's like I say to people, like, I'm really, you know, struggling in this area and I whisper to my girlfriends, I'm like, but I'm really, you know, having some fun. But I think so many of us in the midst of it hide the joy because we don't know how to get what we need or ask for what we need or schedule us first. And so we have to do it indirectly or we think we have to do it indirectly. Do you find that uh, yes. people have to wait until think- they're burnt out before and they have a meltdown? Yeah. They're like, see, I told you I was suffering. And especially in the pandemic, I think people are almost afraid to be to find joy. Yeah. Because I feel like there's so much shame right now. And I feel like if you if you did, like, say you took a day for yourself and you discovered um, a, a limiting belief that you had and you worked through it and you feel really happy about it, and you want to share it. There's almost like a shame, like, how dare you? be okay? Or how dare you be growing in a pandemic, you know? Um, because that's the message that's out there. And so I'm just, I'm just encouraging women right now that number one, showing up every day is enough, just showing up and assuming positive intent in whatever environment you're in is enough, whether it's trying to figure out school for your kids or working on the front lines or recreating a business plan, whatever you're doing. But it's also okay to have joy right now. Mm -hmm. Two things can be true at once. You can be going through some really difficult things in your life or your family or financially, whatever's going on in the pandemic. And you can also have joy. Which is so important because people have forgotten the word and. Like when we panic, (laughs) ego throws out the word and and it makes everything either or. And if we want to build a world, if we want to curate a world that's bigger and more abundant, we've got to be careful not to um, limit room for things like joy and suffering. But I think, you know, I know for myself, it's like, well, my suffering isn't that bad. And I have so much privilege. I mean, you combine the world health crisis with some of the, you know, awakening going on in this world about race and racism and, and racial inequity. Mm -hmm. And what people are doing to not offend others, which we women are great at, is we start playing small and we start taking 99% of us off the table because we don't want to offend anybody. Instead of coming forward and saying, I'm sure this is probably flawed in my thinking. I'm sure, you know, maybe my privilege or bias shows. I'm sure if you're suffering and I'm sharing joy, that's certainly a difference. And I'm willing to just messily put it out there and count on the people in my life to just love me. That's all I need. Right. Right. Yeah. So and I love that. And, and, you know, I know I was struggling a couple months ago. I was really struggling with some negativity and some negative messages and some negative leadership. And I reached out to you and you said something to me that I have literally cling to for the last three months. You have said, um, I was talking about the message that I was hearing and you said, that's not your message. That's that message isn't for you. Why are you accepting it? Like, why are you taking that message and accepting it? when you're going this direction and this is the path that you're on, um, which is a growth path. Why are you accepting this stress path? Like, why are you accepting that message? And yeah, just because somebody like, sends oh it doesn't mean it has your name on it. And I think it was, um, I think it was Martin Luther King that said, um, just because you call me by that name doesn't mean I have to answer. I love that mm. that was helpful for you. Oh, it was so helpful for me. It has, it was like a mindset shift because I was like, yeah, why am I looking down this direction that I'm not going? 
Why am I accepting these negative messages instead of turning this way? And, you know, there's so much going on in our world. There's, there's so much, our world has changed. Our day to day has changed for every single person, whether we're in healthcare, whether we're a teacher, whether we're in business, every one of our daily lives has changed. And at the same time, we're also like shining a light in our deepest biases and, and, yes. and like our identities, right? That's been shaken. And so what we our know- Our underbelly, day, we are showing our underbelly and everybody feels so vulnerable. Right. And so I have found that one thing that I've just tried to focus on is like, whoever said I have to be do this perfectly- that's, that is an illusion, right? So the minute I start, like you said, stepping back, not giving our full selves, not putting ourselves out there, mm-hmm. it's because that fear of messing up or, or that calling that we have to be perfect. So like me as a, as a white privileged woman, um, I'm supposed to deal with this whole systemic racism and fix myself in 24 hours perfectly. Yeah. Like, okay, no, no one's expecting that. I'm expecting that. I I think that's the expectation. So what does that make me do? It makes me want to pull back and not ask questions and not be vulnerable or not admit my mistakes or not admit my bias. And that's the opposite of what we need right now. Right. So, so I think that the first thing is like, I try to wake up every morning and tell myself like you today, You have to, I think it's Brene Brown who said, um, I don't have to, uh, know what's right, but I have to do what's right. Right. Like I may not know what's right, but I have to do what's right today. And so I keep telling myself, like, I don't have to be perfect. I don't have to know everything that's right, but I have to do what's right today. And what, what, what is in front of me. And so I think being in the moment, giving ourselves grace, ditching the perfection, and not stepping back in the shadows because I see so women, so many women doing that right now because they're exhausted and they're mm-hmm. afraid of, ma- of making a mistake. And the ego uses perfection to oppress. And it, because mm-hmm. I'm going to sit back, I'm going to read all the New York Times bestsellers. I'm going to take a course in white fragility. I'm going to do all of this. And then I will earn my, uh, my place. I'll be good enough to like, come back in and be worthy of a discussion um, instead of just saying, I'm bringing my own worthy self in and it's messy and I'm learning and love goes a long way. And just when we need to step up that perfectionism, I think for many of us is a big oppressor. And part of it is because the other thing the ego does is if you step up, you will get a lot of feedback and then you've got to choose not to be wounded by it. You've got to choose to go, Oh my gosh, that feedback seems like it was meant for me. That fits my soul right now. And that feedback doesn't seem like it's meant for me. And here's how the universe works. If you ignore feedback, you don't think it's meant for you. It will keep coming. And if it's not (laughs) meant for you, it will stop. Like there, there are no mistakes in this world. like, and, and I think as, the ego wants us to be perfect because when we do get into a messy situation, if we aren't skilled of just saying, Oh my gosh, thank you for that. That hit my heart. And you know, my mom used to say, "Sai, you're perfect. And you could stand some improvement. Mm. And that was so beautiful to me because it was like, I'm worthy right now as I am. Mm. And if I keep my heart and mind open, what I need to improve on will be supported by the universe and, and people I love that. And finding that and, and you do such a good job with that. I love that that was helpful. Right after I wrote that to you, um, and you were working, you know, through a couple of things that day, tough stuff that you, that came your way, tough stuff for any of us. I um, really, you know, kind of spoke from my soul when I wrote to you. And then I went on FaceTime Live and I had to follow my own advice So I went on FaceTime Live and we advertised, I'm doing free FaceTime Live. Um, I'm in this with you. Like, I'm. let's Mm. be in it together. I got this response that was not meant for me because evidently they don't know me. (laughs) Sai, you are not in this with us. You are hiding out in Mexico where all the privileged people go. Like, and what that person didn't know couldn't know is on the side, I'm texting you and probably 20 other physicians. I'm doing free 
it doesn't matter if it costs anything. I'm, I'm doing every staff meeting I can online for nurses in New York and Houston. And, but my ego went like this. Oh, I am going to write and take a screenshot of my calendar and I'm going to show this person who I met with. And I just, in fact, I just helped a doctor. And I'm like, sorry, that's ridiculous. Then my ego took me to go the other way. Fine. I'm not helping anybody. I am just <laughs> going to enjoy Mexico. And if I can't do it right, I won't do it. And I just watched my ego, like on those pinball machines, mm, like just go bing, yeah. bing, bing. And then I thought, maybe I should reread the text that I sent to Dr. Sasha. I read it <laughs> and I go, maybe that feedback isn't meant for me. Maybe they were speaking from the hurt in their heart that they're scared and they're wondering if the people they've looked up to will be there for them right now. And I did respond to that message. I responded with, I care about you. I um, hope if there's anything I can do to help you as well, um, here's my personal um, cell phone number. Just let me know if there's something you need. And it felt great. But the energy in that one hour of ping ponging, I'm like, why put myself through that? So I love that that's where you go with this. It's so beautiful. Well, it, you know, one of the things that this, this time in our life is really taught me is how often I use, um, future goals or events or something I have to look forward to a trip. Um, you know, something that I've earned, I've earned to ignore the present. And right now, like wow. we can't, we can't really build something. We don't know when we can take our next big vacation. We can't really plan events that are in person. We can't, we can't like say, I'm going to do this and then I'm going to go here and I'm going to do, we, we can't do that right now. And wow, that, that revealed a lot of discontent and how I was using that to kind of escape the day to day. And bribe like, myself. Like we're over functioning and it's like, okay. I used to do this. I'm, the reason we have a vacation always in November is I'm going to almost kill myself in September and October. So and that you're then, crawling into the vacation. Yeah, yeah. Usually you get sick that I do. Like usually yeah, I get there yeah. and I get a really bad chest cold, right? Yeah. yeah. Because I asked the question, like, what does this time reveal to you? And there's so many answers. That's profound. How often I defer happiness. I don't curate by um, making sure that I have self-care and I'm involved in things I love. And it's like I put up with or tolerate untolerable things that I've agreed to participate in for the deferred happiness of a few months from now, at least I'll be on the plane going somewhere. That's yeah. profound. Yeah. So it's been really challenging and really revealing to me to see how, um, you know, life is not supposed to be joy in six weeks of vacation or six weeks of, of time off, right? Like life is supposed to, we're supposed to feel joy and, and we're supposed to have that, that self-care day to day to day, not like spa trip to kill myself for four months and then spa trip and then I'll have fun and then I'll relax and then I'll sleep. Like, so it's been really interesting because the other thing is like, okay, I had all these excuses for why I wasn't putting my self care first because, oh, I have to do this, uh, and, this uh, and then all of them are gone. And then I'm like, what's the excuse now? I don't have those excuses. Maybe it's that I don't want to take an hour or 30 minutes to meditate because I don't want to go through the mess that's in my mind. But yeah, that's you don't what want to I'm being still. called to do. Yeah, yeah. You know so what I, I it's love very about this? Revealing. It's so revealing. One, I think a lot of people have revealed that to themselves, how they confuse self-care and self-soothing. So mm -hmm. self-care mm -hmm. are like the daily disciplines, the daily habits. They're the, how we um, arrange our day to make sure we can move through it, not violently, but peacefully, right? So we don't have violent schedules. Yes. And a lot of us, especially some of us that, you know, are able to earn you know, to support our family, some decent dollars. We do a lot of that. Self-care is a laying on the beach with a glass of wine in our hands. Well, that's lovely. That's not self-care at that point. At that point, that's self-soothing. Right. Now, spa care, yep. if you do it regularly, can be self-care. But you know, what I was thinking about is how often too, I put my authentic self to be scheduled later, like showing up with my authentic self. Because when 
I got three months in Mexico. People are like, Sai, you, you know, you look great. And I'm like, all of a sudden I realized how I've been differing, but I hadn't put it in this way. Um, the life I really want to live, who I am authentically. Like authentically, I'm kind of a homebody, homemaker. Um, I didn't realize how disciplined I was, almost to the point of rigidity. I didn't realize how um, much I loved routine and little rituals. Like I got into this thing where the sun would be setting. I would go for a walk on the beach, watch the sunset, meditate, walk back in. I'm on solar power, light a candle. And that candle scheduled like taps when you're at, at camp, when they play taps, it just scheduled, yeah. <laughs> it's scheduled. You are off the clock. You have no more responsibility. You have two splendid more hours to just say, what do you want to do? And I hadn't asked myself, like, say, what would you like to do? Because it was always like, I knew what I was going to do, get to the hotel, get all my stuff ready for tomorrow, answer all my emails. Like I never had to ask me authentic. So I wasn't in touch with my authentic self. Like, what do you want to do today? Like, yes. what it, yes. So it's just, I, I love well, that. That's and, what it's revealed. And when you're talking about this, it reminds me of how I have discovered that my authentic self what I've learned in this pandemic is very similar to you being both of us are extreme high achievers. We love goals. We love to work, 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 but I've realized that there's so much ego tied up into that. That is not the true me. But when I, if I were to call you and say, and you say, Hey, Sash, what'd you do today? And I'm like, well, I laid out by the pool for an hour and then I wrote in my journal for an hour. And then I went on a walk that's not <laughs> as like ego building as yeah. when I'm like, oh, I wrote a manuscript and yeah. then I did a webinar and, and then, then I, I for an tear, and then, and like, then I did a day or yeah. <laughs> and then I was up for 24 hours. Like it's so ego building and our ego loves that. Like, our oh, ego we're loves working so we, hard. We get rewarded for not checking in in the stillness and, um, yeah, you get rewarded. You're working so hard. And in fact, if you yeah. don't publish, if you don't do this, you, you know, won't advance in your career. I mean, in academics, like they don't even yeah. leave it up to you to figure out what good looks like. They're like, you need right. two publications you and you need, yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, so. And you know, what so, is interesting, interesting is I found too, that the, so much happens with or without me. Okay. So this is like, so much of this hustle is self-soothing because so I'm like, Oh gosh, it's a pandemic. I have a little downtime. I should be out hustling and maybe get like, you know, be making sales calls and, and pound on publisher doors and like figure all this out, sell new virtual courses. I didn't do any of that. And I picked up the phone one day and people, my agent was like, "Sai, they want another book. What do you got? I'm like, but I didn't hustle. Like, so you mean I would have gotten that call whether I hustled or not? Like what? So I have found out like my team has done a great job on some amazing things and I've been kind of an absent leader in some regards. So that was the other big thing that got revealed to me where my ego dissolved one little ounce. I'm like, so the universe does this stuff, whether I'm killing myself or not, <laughs> like this, wait a minute. And I think yes. I keep and myself busy so I don't mess up what the universe is giving birth to me, you know, is like... Right, 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 right. And look at the, and look at, you know, you taking a, um, time to really investigate your authentic self. You're going to bless all of us from that. Like your book is going to be so rich with wisdom and like knowledge that if you had kept going at the pace, yeah, none of us would be able to learn that about our own self. Right. Yeah. Like, and, and I'm really, really recognizing that I'm like, you know, here I'm in the middle of a pandemic in the middle of a cornfield in this beautiful home that I love. And I'm like, if I can't enjoy this time where I'm not on planes and I'm not speaking everywhere, like, why do I even have this home? Like, why do I have all of this if, if I'm not called to enjoy it right now? And, and really go deep and go like, why are you doing all of these things? Is it, it, it started because you were burned out. It started because you wanted to help other women. And I feel like it's coming full circle. Like I'm getting back down to the nitty gritty, you know, I'm getting back down to like, not to get on a plane and go give talks everywhere and do all this, but like helping, figuring out what is motivating me in the quiet, in the stillness, 
like today, not with something to look forward to, not with a million trips and all these things, but in the stillness in today, like how, what, what is being stripped away. And I do feel like that a lot. Like, I feel like it's kind of raw. Like I'm feeling like I'm getting back down to the basics and I'm loving it. Yeah. It feels like a homecoming. I mean, we avoid it, avoid it, avoid it. And then when we fall into mm-hmm. it, it just, it quenches a thirst that we've tried to quench this thirst with everything else out there. Um, and yet I know there's a lot of perfectionists listening to us and they're like, oh, dang it. Then, you know, I got off the path. Okay. That's, it's not a violent thing. You don't go back. You had to get off the path to get back. There was no off the path. You, and, and that's like, just when you meditate, if the mantra leaves you, you don't like harshly correct yourself. You just favor the mantra. When you notice the mantra is not there, you just turn attention towards the mantra. You just favor it back. You don't berate yourself, you know, and chide <laughs> yourself into coming back. It's, it, it's, it's profound. I absolutely love what you're writing. And, um, you guys, if you're not following Sasha on social media, give your call tags right now, because the stuff you're putting out there is profound. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I, you can follow me. You can find me at become brave enough on almost every medium, but it's interesting because when all of this started, um, I just had this, I was just drawn to hope to people putting out hope and, and reality. So I love when people, the people that were like, you know, we're going to wear masks, but we don't know yet if this is, or we're using this drug. We think ibuprofen's okay, but we're not sure yet because that's so honest and hopeful, not like shaming and blaming. Like I just couldn't even, I had to, I unfollowed so many leaders during too. this pandemic. I, well, I think it really it, showed my what own was, mental health. Yeah. What was their script and what was their authentic leadership? Cause all of a sudden yeah. I'm like this person at first I went, they're off brand. Like, why are they putting it out there? That's <laughs> off brand. Yeah. Yeah. And then I realized yeah. I'm like, no, that says something about where their headspace mm. really is. Yeah. So I have just been my, I've just been telling myself, like, I'm going to stay with messages of hope and messages of growth and messages of it's okay to be struggling and have joy. Those, both of those things can be true. You can be a work in progress, but also encourage someone else in, in your day. And I've just tried to really stay on that because women right now that I'm leading, I'm, and I primarily, mostly women follow me, some men too. I think we're all going through this, like, we are, we, we are so exhausted and we are so overwhelmed with information, like the information dump that's happening in our world, because we have to, we have so many, so much has changes every day. Even like going to the grocery store has changed for us that we're constantly being inundated with information. So I've just tried to put out in, you know, messaging of hope and messaging of, you know, you're, you're okay. Showing up is half the battle, like Mm -hmm. just show up and just to encourage and just to really embrace, uh, the women that I'm leading right now, because they're so tired, I think exhaustion and overwhelm, but at the same time, they're going, how am I so tired when I just go to work and go home? Like, why is that so exhausting? You know? So I think having that mental, um, rest. Like I love when you always say that, you know, busyness is the new self violence. It's so true. And when you're at home, you can find a lot of things to make yourself busy. Like you, you get the the list starts going like, I should do this. And then I should do that. And I I have to, let's remodel part of the house. We don't have enough chaos. Like let's, let's remodel. Let's, you know, it's just like when I have a writing deadline, all of a sudden I have like really, like a lot of laundry. Like I get very particular, like that laundry could have laid there forever, but it's a new business. We even started to do this. Like I love to be abundant and to give. And as my schedule cleared up, cause we had some cancellations, it was like, people are like, well, if Sai has some availability, will she come on my podcast? And I'm like, absolutely. I'm always glad to help other people. And you know, it helps maybe new audiences learn about us. And all of a sudden, with um, Sarah, amazing chief of staff. We have a relationship where we go this way and then we send her back. And we started to say, wait a minute, is this the highest value of use of the time right now for Cy Wakeman personally and for the world? Like I can serve that person who made the invite in there, 
nice audience, or I could get still and, you know, write something in this book, which takes so much more reflection. Easy to write business books based on research, not easy, but you do so much research. You just like take your findings and the findings tell the story. And then you kind of like report the story. And, Mm -hmm. but the book I'm writing right now, um, the research is called going inside and not just reflecting, like contemplating, because reflection's like, what was my part in this moment? Contemplation is, why is that such a theme for my whole dang life? Mm. And so like self-reflection can be almost go from self-care to self-soothing pretty quickly. Cause it's like, if I can own myself, I can make amends. I can apologize. We can move on. Contemplation is like, Whoa, like that is an unsolvable thing. I just discovered. I just have to live my way into that. So when I think right now, my point is the, the virus brought us down to like radical simplification, which is where everyone says, if you have a problem, start from, if I have an allergy, my allergist would say, we've got to radically simplify your diet mm-hmm. down to like four things. And then we're going to add things back in. And then we're going to notice how you feel when that comes back in. So I'm like radical simplification. Nobody's going anywhere. Everybody's in the big timeout unless, you know, the tough jobs of being on the front line right now, which we have people who serve coffee and people saving lives all called like essential workers. I think maybe some might not be so essential if we weren't in a capitalistic market. But <laughs> I'm like, wow, this poor person has to go serve coffee. But anyway, we radically simplify. And then what I'm really encouraging people to do is notice what you're bringing back in. And if it builds your energy or depletes your energy, if it is mm. joyful or not joyful. So like that busyness comes back in and it's like I wake up and I open up my schedule and I have three podcasts with people I adore. It's not about that. It's just about, that's not bringing me joy right now. Mm-hmm. So what do mm-hmm. I need to do in the future? I've been cut off from the incredible information that um, I get when I get still. It's like simple instructions. So I don't do this, do that. But if you don't get still, you never get that information. So we're all operating out of what would people think of me if I did? And we're trying to get all of our information about how to live our life externally instead of internally, and it cuts us off from a big source. So I love that you're thinking, gosh, how do I curate and add things back in and really design the life that I want? Because mm-hmm. I, we all want you still working with women, but it may not be having the schedule that you've had. Yeah, yeah. And and I think like also there's a season. What I'm also learning is there's seasons. And who I was as a leader five years ago, four years ago, three years today is different and who I'm leading, what those people look like, or the number of people may be very small, maybe a very small group of women that I'm leading through this time. Um, versus last year, I'm leading thousands of women, um, through a different thing. And maybe I'm being called to, you know, really cultivate and I'm working on some things personally, um, to really build like a a strong membership, um, uh, for women and like the summit that I'm putting on that we are so honored to have you speaking. I'm so um, excited. You know, I, I hate the word pivot, like, but you is, pivoted. Uh, we were supposed to have, uh, well, talk about looking forward I to something know. on your schedule. Like what was going to oh, get you through I'm the so summer excited. was September because you put on the best conferences, but you're going to put on the absolute best summit ever the lineup. I know I am. And I'm really calling women to just take a self retreat. So I'm encouraging everybody to just self retreat in their home and listen to these powerful conversations and like go inward and just like mark their calendar that they are retreating in their own home. They are off the grid. Some women are actually going to a hotel by themselves just for the weekend, just so they can like retreat in the hotel. Isn't that awesome? What a great idea. I'm super excited about it. And when is it? Yeah. I know we're It's September 10th through the 13th. And, um, it's just a totally encouraging, empowering, inspiring. And every conversation is to make you kind of put yourself back in the driver's seat of your own health and well-being. So it's like, I'm like, it's literally going to be like driver's ed. Like you have been out of the driver's seat because you've been taking care of everybody else during this pandemic and this time. And now you're back in the driver's seat and like learning how to drive your own self 
um, well-being and health. I'm so excited about it. I'm so excited. When I talk about, you know, the process I went through for the, you know, three months in Mexico and now, um, a big part of that process was being supported by women I met in, um, your circle. I mean, Dr. Allie was a coach of mine and, um, just amazingly helpful. And I saw so many great people on the docket. So are we going to yeah. um, yeah. be having some, I know that we're doing some you know, virtual conversations, but is there like a forum where people can interact with each other while yes. we're all going through this? Yes. There's, it's going to be awesome. So there's going to be live QAs with the speakers. We're going to be having live zoom and networking. And then we're also going to have a daily meditation. You can do live a daily workout. That's going to be like fun. Awesome. You can just do it in your hotel room. If you're in a hotel room or in your office, if you're at the office about loving your body and just how to love yourself. And it's just going to be super inspiring and really centering ourselves as women back in our own mental space and our health space, which I don't think we've been doing for the last several oh months. Gosh. Right. So we're quieting everybody and we're going to have some really powerful talks. I'm super excited. And you're going to be one of them. I'm and oh my gosh, them. the women are so excited to hear from you. I can't wait. And I will put links in um, this um, podcast uh, description because you guys, I just, you have to participate. You just have to participate. We're not here selling anything, but the possibility of you could curate a different life that, that we can emerge from this, you know, world health crisis evolved. We can emerge, um, poised for even greater contribution that takes less out of us, um, more effortless contribution. And would, wouldn't that be cool? Now, during all of this, like, did your book come out in March pre-COVID or? Right. I was COVID on the pre, I got, it, I got mine early. So I can't, I don't know when the actual launch was, but um, you got to yeah. talk about that process. Yes. When did it come out? Yes. So, it, you know, it was really interesting. It came out uh, the right at the first of March, right when the pandemic hit. So I had a whole book launch scheduled. I had to cancel all of my events. And this is and your at first, first I just major, like, my like, first book. Yes. Uh, it's between so grit, right? between grit and, and grace. Was, yeah. And it was, it was like a, you know, it was so interesting because it, people were so worried about me. They were like, Oh my gosh, are you so sad? Are you so, and I thought, you know, I had already defined what success was for me with the book and success was writing the book. And yeah. even if I could just help like a few people find their authentic self in that book and I have had so many women message me and send me like little bits of truth that they have discovered reading that book through the pandemic, um, where they have like said, Oh my gosh, I'm going to, I have to stop living my life for the expectations of others. I have to stop putting my own health and well being second or third or fourth or fifth. I have to stop the bitterness and let go of this previous failure. Mm -hmm. Um, and all of these things that women have are discovering. So even though it wasn't like the book launch that I anticipated, um, it, it's been, I've gotten amazing feedback and I'm really honestly okay with everything, how it launched, because I feel like that was the plan, like all yeah. along, like I put it out there and I feel like what was supposed to happen happened. And I'm still getting, you know, great feedback from women on the book. It's so you can get it on book. Amazon get it anywhere. It's an amazing about between grit and grace. You just gave a perfect example of not spiritually bypassing or finding the silver lining, but actually knowing your role in something. Um, I learned with my first book that once you write it and release it, it's just not your business anymore. It is your gift to the universe and the universe will, will carry it to where it needs to go and how it needs to go. And what the lesson for me is, because I'm just writing about this, is the power you give away when you name something too soon and how it kills our joy. So if you name, if you stay out of the wonder and the awe and the gratitude and the curiosity, you know, that's a big part of resilience is hope and continued curiosity. Huh. I wonder how this will play out. So you launch a book. COVID hits, naming that thing as a crappy book launch at the worst time ever, you know, and if you're really bad, you'll take it to why does God hate me? Like, <laughs> but the not naming of that, the not naming too soon says, isn't that interesting? After mm -hmm. the fact, when we, when we really watch how the movie plays out, many of us who are your audience are such over functioners. We would of course bought the book 
and put it on our nightstands <laughs> because we defer doing anything for ourselves. So it would have been a beautiful thing on my nightstand. But because of COVID, I'm like, oh my gosh, I feel guilty having Amazon deliver hard copy books. So I really have to read the books I have. And bam, it's like I read the book and it was fantastic. So oh, thank you. So if you would have named that too soon, it would have been a disaster. But actually, the fact that people really had a, a little bit extra time made mm-hmm. it a place where they could really, the book arrived at the perfect time. And that maybe would not be what you named it when you said I launched the book early March. You wouldn't have said, and that was the perfect time unless you stayed open. And I think that's the main lesson yeah. for people. Um, and I just, it's top of mind because I'm writing the chapter right now on how life expands when you stay curious and how life contracts when you name things too soon. It's like mm. you call it, you know, and in healthcare, yeah. we have some methodology for us not naming things too soon. Like, you know, when you're doing the diagnostic, you have like a decision methodology so that you don't name it too soon. And you right. balance that with going with the obvious. Right. But right. Um, you know, even if somebody, you know, is, you know, you're giving them life support, there's methodology for like not calling it too soon. Like, cause you've seen amazing things happen, you know, mm-hmm. where you're, you've done chest yeah. compressions, you are thinking this doesn't seem like it's ending well, but thank God the doctors have a methodology for when to name it. That's a morbid example, but otherwise, yeah. you know, if you left it up to you in the moment on adrenaline, that'd be a bad idea. Yes, absolutely. So. Absolutely. And I, it's, it's just another like wonderful lesson that I feel like I've learned in this entire experience. And I being a leader and, and being able to see the women that I'm leading in my group, um, the amazing, the, just the, the expansion of how open they are to learn things during this time period, um, despite being exhausted, despite going and taking care of really sick people or taking home, you know, schooling kids at home. Um, it's amazing what we can learn about ourselves when we're open to it. And when we don't, like you said, call things out or say, well, this is what all that I'm going to accomplish this month, you know, maybe that's not what you're supposed to accomplish yeah. this month. Maybe you're supposed to be still like I've tried to be, um, which is so hard for me. It's yeah. so hard for me to be still and really learn what it is that I know I'm supposed to in this, in this season, which is not getting on planes and giving amazing keynotes and, and, you know, publishing a million manuscripts, maybe I'm supposed to really be focusing on what's going on inside. So I'm so excited for your book to come out because I know it's going to be such an amazing, even more so journey inside. It's going to be exciting, exciting. And, you know, it's, it's mind blowing to me as we started when we said, you know, some of us have this guilt about like, oh, maybe I'm going to use this time for the good. It's like, it's okay to have and to have like profound, open heart compassion for the world and to be learning hard stuff about ourselves and the parts that we may not like love the minute we discover them. And to just be really open and caring and okay with um, what's happening. And it's just, it's so important, but I have people almost afraid of saying, you know, I, uh, I'm doing good things right now. And that's why I love your message of hope. So it is always such a pleasure. You are just brilliant. So I always ask like self care, like your best tips. You gave us a ton um, anything else that you want to put out there that, that might be, you know, helpful? one, one thing that I, I have done started doing during the pandemic, believe it or not, is I, it is really hard for me to be still. Like I said, I'm always like, if I have three moments, I always think I should be doing something, writing something, you know, even taking notes in my phone. Um, I purchased a meditation bench. You can get it on Amazon. They're like, it's just like this little bench that is next to my bed and it it's like supports your back. So, it, and it doesn't hurt your knees. So you kind of sit on it and you put your legs underneath it and it's cute. It's also very cute. <laughs> came in a little package. When you start so, following Sasha, you'll realize that <laughs> cuteness comes into play here. I think half my wardrobe is picked by her. <laughs> so 
that thing and I can't like ignore it. It's like, it's like having a pet. Like I'm like, I have to sit, have I sat on that bench today for five minutes? Oh, I love And that. so it's, it's made me stop when I'm like in that like hurried, when I start feeling hurry or anxious, it makes me stop because I see it and I'm like, oh man, it's like, like a dog sitting there saying, pet me, I have to stop. And I get on that thing for five minutes and I'm telling you, I, it, I redirect, I get still and redirect and go, okay, don't get anxious about this. Don't worry. Cause there's so many things we could be anxious about and worrying about that we yep. can't plan or we yep. can't, we don't know. The truth is we don't know. We really yeah. don't. We don't know where Worrying this is, is going to end. Is a behavior that's self-soothing. It doesn't change anything. Yes. So the bench has been awesome for me. I love this. Uh-huh. From a social work standpoint, we would go, oh my gosh, Sasha, that's a visual cue. That's like an amazing. Oh, yeah. Okay. What we say at Rally Based Leadership is our goal is to interrupt your thinking and then to help reveal something more true for you. And as you interrupt your thinking, you can stop, pause, reveal, and then reincorporate it into a conscious decision to live differently. And that's exactly what you're doing. I love that. That because when I you know, I keep thinking, oh, I'm going to improve my Spanish, and I literally every day forget. And I looked at my Mango Spanish app, and I'm like, oh, I turned off notifications in an attempt to quiet my life. So one of the things I went through, I I went through all of my email and unsubscribed from like a gazillion things. So when I open up my email, it's very curated, but I kind of over unsubscribed. And so now things I want reminders of, I'm putting back in there. But um, leading back to the community too, and this whole concept is, I found that my ego pre-creates a built-in excuse for me. So I... um, make sure that things are included in my life that I would feel guilty ignoring and they kind of get sour or grumpy when I'm doing things for myself. So it's like, I build this world where people have expectations of me and I build it. I build it. I choose. I'm like, Oh, I'll do anything for you. I will gladly. And so then I have a chronic way to avoid myself. And what I've really learned is the community I build around me right now is one either of hope and um, encouragement of things like getting still or not knowing or um, being uncertain or trying something and redirecting. And I really have to stop pre-building communities that have lower tolerance for me saying, Mm -hmm. I'm sitting in my pajamas all day, I'm a writer. And in fact, renaming myself, I used to go, yeah, you know, I do all of these things and I also, you know, write. And I was, it was hard for me to say I'm an author. And then I started to go, okay, if I'm an author, I have this new book contract. If I'm an author, how do authors live? They wear funky, this is my view of an author. They wear funky clothes. They um, are unpredictable. (laughs) Their friends totally understand when they flake out. They're artistic. I got involved in a chapter. Sorry, I was late to the, you know, call. Like, if I want to claim, like, I'm trying to be an author without giving myself any of the luxuries that other people who write great books take for themselves. I'm like yeah, doing it at midnight yeah. after work. And I'm like, oh, I'm going to start really focusing on what I create. And that's why I really hope people join us in the community you've created. I mean, you don't just have thousands of subscribers. You have community members. And that's a big difference for me on your social media sites. Like, be careful what you put out there, not because you want to be censored. But if you go, I need a method for that. Anybody have any ideas? These people will help you. These people are like, <laughs> like, don't just put a rhetorical question out there because they're like, they're like, sigh, I researched it in Elsevier and I have three, like, <laughs> I know. three recommendations. So I'm true. like, you guys, I'm fine. I was just being rhetorical. But <laughs> as we conclude this, I wanted to just make that call out with the realization I've had. Like, I love that you visually cue with this meditation bench. How are we visually cueing by when we're online? Who comes into our presence? How are we curating less news and despair and uh, more hope and more dreaming and more scheming? And even when it comes to just some of the just horrendous conversations and things happening to um, people I love who happen to be people of color. Like I can listen to one news feed about how screwed up we are, or I can tune into conversations where people are all like, it's bad. We don't exactly know 
how we're ever going to make this better, mm-hmm. but I'll start. Like, let's, let's just go forward. And so I just encourage everybody, clean your closets and then clean your community. Like, yeah. get, if you haven't yeah. worn it or it hasn't helped in a year, just gently let it go. Just like, go. Yeah. Yeah. Curate. Yes. Amen. Marie, Amen. Marie comes all your life right now, right? So, <laughs> yes. Awesome. Well, I absolutely, absolutely adore you. You know that. Um, usually we're using these episodes to answer questions. I had hundreds of questions that talked about, like, just how do I approach this more peacefully and joyfully? So usually I read the question and then my expert responds just to make sense for the series for people. They're like, this is all over the place. Yes, it is. Um, But (laughs) I consolidated all of those questions and just really put it out there for um, knowing that you would bring us your grit, your grace and your wisdom, my friends. You're amazing. So thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having me on.